This week we asked the question, should you splurge on the purge? Are you even trying anymore? No. A combination of The Strangers and The Hunger Games, The Purge takes place in a world where crime and unemployment are non-existent because once a year, for 12 hours, anything goes. And that's a nice way of saying you're allowed to kill anybody you want. For the most part, people seem to think this is a pretty good idea. But one family begins to reconsider when, on the night of The Purge, they take in a stranger and invite the attraction of a bloodthirsty mob. The film does a great job of explaining how an entire country could get behind the idea of a purge, and this created a plot that I found refreshingly original and singularly terrifying. Although, soapbox moment, the scariest part of the movie was listening to all the teens in the audience talking about how much they wished it was real life. Ugh, tell me about it. Listen, I agree, this is a good, thought-provoking idea, and the foundation for what should have been, could have been a terrific psychological thriller. Unfortunately, that's not what I got. This movie spends way too much time trying to make the audience jump and scream, and not enough time focusing on what's really scary. The idea that maybe, just maybe, my neighbor would kill me if he got the chance. I thought they did a great job of being scary. The use of masks and silence added an impressive creep factor, plus the use of security cameras, which we've all come to know and love from the studio that brought us paranormal activity. Of course, most of the scary moments came from the antagonists randomly popping up in the background. Not funny. Also, while the lead villain does a really good job of being creepy, it doesn't take that much to be creepy when the entire movie you're doing this. See, I didn't care for the villains. I didn't find them scary. And I'm tired of movies trying to tell me that anything childlike is inherently creepy. For instance, just because the villain is wearing a baby doll mask and giggling while skipping down the hallway carrying an axe doesn't make it scary. <laughs> It was a little weird how the neighbors became instant versions of the Stepford Wives. Glassy-eyed, emotionless, and robotic. Also, Ethan Hawke picks up a little bit of a Batman voice, and he borrows heavily from Kevin Bacon's Death Sentence. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I am right in the middle of a game of Six Degrees of Separation to Kevin Bacon, and I could use the help. There's an interesting idea and message in this movie, but unfortunately it gets buried beneath a pile of horror movie cliches and banal violence. I say skip it. Now, if you want a good home invasion movie that deals with the subject of violence, I say check out Funny Games. It's smart, gritty, and disturbing. Oh, and Home Alone. You can never go wrong with Home Alone. I like this one a lot from a philosophical viewpoint. I thought the film made some great points about anarchy and apathy. For instance, if your society is built on anarchy, there's no loopholes for anyone. And if it's built on apathy, no one's going to care when your number's up. This, plus some genuine scares, I say see it. Remember, you can catch more reviews and even worse puns every week on our Facebook page and right here on WJTV.com. Now you realize this is the first time we've disagreed on a movie. Yep. And you know what that means. You're going to purge me. You got it.